I've tried every budgeting method and platform under the sun, but I've never shown you exactly how I do my budget, and trust me, what I'm about to show you could literally make you a millionaire. What is going on everyone? I hope you are all having a fantastic day. So this video is not a review on any specific budgeting platform. And while I am going to reference the tools that I use, the tools themselves are not as important. What is important is the methodology. And then of course, the fact that you actually need to make your budget. But the core principle that is the foundation of my budget that has literally set me on the path to being a millionaire is what's called zero based budgeting. This is a concept Concept that I've talked about many times before and you may already be familiar with it yourself and while the formal definition is a budgeting method in which all expenses must be justified for each new period the simple way of thinking about zero based budgeting is allocating every single dollar of your income whether that's towards your expenses your saving or your investing or really anything in between so I am gonna walk you through the tools that I use to implement this budgeting strategy but I want to make it very clear that zero based budgeting does not mean that you are living paycheck to paycheck and have zero dollars left at the end of the month. I think that's a very common misconception, but all this means is that you were giving every single dollar a purpose, including your saving and investing. So that does not mean that you are spending every single dollar that you earn. All right, if you're falling asleep already because budgeting is not the most exciting topic in the world, wake up and let's walk through exactly how I do my budget every single month as someone who has used and reviewed nearly every single budgeting tool and strategy and method under the sun. So some of you may already know this, but for my banking, I use the SoFi checking and savings platform. And for my budgeting, I use the every dollar budgeting app. And I found this to be a fantastic combination, but you can use whatever combination of tools you feel works best. And I actually recommend that you try out a few different options because everyone is going to have slightly different different needs. But I would recommend that you get a dedicated budgeting tool outside of your regular banking platform, because even something like SoFi's dedicated budgeting platform, Relay, isn't robust enough to truly create a budget on its own. Now, I've reviewed a lot of these tools, but some of my favorites have been Mint, YNAB, or You Need a Budget, Good Budget, Personal Capital, and of course, the tool that I personally use for my budget, Every Dollar. To be honest with you, they all pretty much work in the same way with slightly different user interfaces. So check out the many reviews that I've done on these platforms and choose what's best for you or just keep a budget in a spreadsheet. What's really important is that you know your numbers and you're able to track them consistently. But all of this budgeting effort is for nothing if you aren't protecting your financial accounts and identity online. In fact, identity theft is the fastest growing crime in America, affecting one in 20 Americans. Americans. But thankfully, that's where today's video sponsor, Aura, can help. I almost never do these integrated sponsorships, but I've talked about Aura before and have used it myself for a really long time, and I think it is a great product that can help a lot of you. So like I said, financial information unfortunately does get stolen, but usually it's not until you go to log into your account, see that your password has been changed, and start getting notifications that your account has been hacked that the panic and fear starts to set in. And at that point, you're going to say to yourself, I should have listened to Brendan and got Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. It's going to monitor the dark web for your emails, passwords, social security number, and send fast fraud alerts right to your phone and email address. Signing up was super easy and literally took me a matter of minutes. And after linking my many financial accounts and using it for the past year, I can say that as someone who has an insane amount of financial accounts, Aura really does give me immense peace of mind. Plus, I'm even able to set up transaction limit alerts. So if any transaction is over the limit that I set, I immediately get a notification on my phone, which is also a great way to keep your spending in check, which is important when talking about budgeting. So whether you have one financial account or 100 financial accounts like me, don't wait until it is too late. Check out today's sponsor at aura.com magnified to get a 14 day free trial and protect your financial 
accounts from fraud today. All right, now for the good parts. At the beginning of the month, before the month begins, I create our zero based budget. And after you do this for a few months, creating your monthly budget shouldn't take you more than five minutes because a lot of your recurring expenses and income are going to stay pretty much the same month to month. So you can see here that in my every dollar budgeting app, I have my mortgage, all of our utilities, the gas, groceries, restaurants, insurance, and pretty much every single expense that we incur on a monthly basis. Now, some expenses may not occur monthly, maybe they're quarterly or annually, and I'll show you how I deal with that later in the video. But regardless of what tool you are using, you need to input every single expense that you anticipate having in the upcoming month. Then you're also going to input any and all savings goals, including setting money aside for investing, putting money into your emergency fund, saving up for a car, maybe the next vacation. And in my case, I take care of all of those categories first, which is referred to as pay yourself first. But again, everyone is a little bit different. So try out a few different strategies and find what works best for you. All that matters is that you were setting money aside for saving and investing as part of your monthly budget. Also as part of your budget, you of course need income. So you'll want to input any and all sources of income that you anticipate having in the upcoming month. Now, in my case, this is a little bit challenging because my income is so inconsistent. So what I do is I actually create my budget based on last month's income, at least the income from this YouTube channel. So what you're looking at right now is my budget for November of 2022. And the income that is here includes what I paid myself out of my business last month, since this is income consistent and then any additional paychecks that I and my wife anticipate to receive in November which are much easier to estimate since they are fairly consistent once all of your income expenses saving and everything you can think of is in there it's time to start tweaking those numbers as much as possible until your income minus your expenses equals zero hence the name zero based budget now if you're way under budget and you have a ton of money left over that's a great problem to have, and you can throw that extra money into investing or put it towards your next savings goal. Or in my case, my wife and I just dump any extra income into a mortgage payoff fund to help pay off our house early. But of course, you could also be over budget, and that is okay. And if that's the case, then it's time to cut back on some of those discretionary categories like restaurants or lifestyle categories. And that doesn't mean that you need to go bare bones and have no life, but there is certainly a balance and having this type of zero based budget will force you to find that balance because without doing this you would just continue to spend as you would and not really realize that you might be over budget by just a few hundred dollars each month but eventually that is going to eat into your savings and it will catch up with you all right next i want to talk about how your banking platform ties into this and helps you budget for those large annual expenses but stick around to the end of the video because we haven't yet talked about the most amazing amazing advantage of budgeting that I've never shared before here on the channel. All right, but first, like I said, what about those large quarterly or annual expenses? How do you make those part of a monthly budget if you're only incurring that expense once a year? Well, let's take my property taxes, for example. I know that my property taxes are due every single year in August, and I know that they are usually around $5,000 for the year. Well, if I just budgeted as I just showed you and then suddenly August rolled around, well, I would be smacked with a huge $5,000 expense that may not be in the budget. And while I may have the savings to cover that expense, it would completely throw off everything that we just worked on to balance out our entire budget. So instead, what we want to do is divide that large expense that we know about well in advance across 12 months in the year and make that part of our monthly budget. So in the case of our example, I know that I will owe $5,000 each year in August, which divided over 12 months means that I need to be setting aside about $417 per month as part of our zero base budget. Now, property taxes is a pretty boring example, but that's just one that I gave you. But this of course applies to my insurance, which I pay annually. I also use this for any upcoming utilities that might be billed on a quarterly basis, but you can use this for literally 
anything. Maybe you wanna save up for a vacation or buying a new car. So let's say for example, you wanted to buy a $20,000 car and you know that you wanna make that purchase in the next 12 months. Well, most people would probably just go to the dealership today and finance that purchase and end up paying interest for years to come. But instead, if you know you wanna buy that car in the next 12 months, well, that means that you need to be setting aside roughly $1,667 per month in order to buy that $20,000 car in 12 months in cash. That's still a little bit of an extreme example, but you get the point. The sky is really the limit here, and I use this a lot, and that's where the SoFi vaults feature and autopilot tools come into play. Now again, you can go about this however you want, but what my wife and I have done is set up automatic transfers from our SoFi checking accounts into the respective savings vaults for each of our savings goals and annual or quarterly expenses. So if we jump into the SoFi app and head over to the vault section, you can see that I have my annual auto and home insurance in here, which like I said, I've divided over 12 months. So that means that I need to set aside $84 per month. And then at the end of the year, when that $1,000 bill comes for the next year, I'll have that full amount of money set aside and I don't even have to worry about it. But the same thing applies for our home insurance. I have that set up for even quarterly utilities and of course our Roth IRA investing contributions, meaning our direct deposited paycheck comes in, it gets automatically divided across all all of those different expenses, investing and savings goals and any remaining income we allocate where my wife and I feel it is most necessary in order to reach that zero base budget every single month. All right, deep breath. I realize that this may seem like a lot of work, but again, just remember that what's important is not that you pick the best budgeting tool or strategy, but that you're just being consistent and putting one foot in front of the other and making an effort with your budget. I'll be honest with you, I really didn't have a budget until recently, and when I did start creating a true budget, it sucked for a few months, and that's probably going to be the case for you as well. It's gonna take you a little time to become efficient at this. And in my case, it took my wife and I a few months to get on the same page with our long-term financial goals and learn how to make those goals part of our everyday habits. So give yourself some grace and just know that putting one foot in front of the other is really going to make a huge difference financially because budgeting really helps you keep your eye on the prize for the long-term goals and gives you an immense peace of mind and really permission to spend money. So if you're a natural saver like myself and a penny pincher, then by doing your budget and telling your money what to do rather than the other way around, it becomes a lot easier to spend money even on those discretionary things because it again gives you permission to spend and will change your entire relationship with money because at the end of the day, money is nothing more than a tool to achieve your goals and of course bless and help those around you. Beyond that, it's just green pieces of paper that you can't take with you to the grave. But I'd love to know what budgeting tools and strategies you are using down in the comment section below. And of course, if you do wanna check out some of my favorite financial tools and get some free cash, then I'll leave links for those down below the like button as well. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.